Memories are notoriously unreliable, but some memories cannot be extinguished. The bitten oil refinery's blue gas flare, burning fiercely as night, is still imprinted in my mind's eye. When the BP oil refinery at Jack's Beach in Western Port finally began to process shipped oil, that flame became a potent reminder every night of the industrialisation threat to Western Port Bay seen out the front window of our farmhouse. My uncle wrote an article on my grandparents and their conservation um, con con uh, contribution to the conservation movement down there. But also it's very much about family and memory, which is really fitting for the exhibition. I use like an old fashioned 5.4 camera, which is like the old days <laughs> cliche of like the cloth over the head. Um, the focusing, it's a very simple camera, so simple that there's no mirrors to flip the image so it's the right way, so it's actually upside down. So you're composing upside down. Like theoretically, that's how we all see in our brain flips it the right way, yeah? So, but I don't flip it when I'm looking through that <laughs> lens, it's still upside down. So I'm actually quite often like, got my head on an angle trying to tip it the right way. I'm sure if I spend enough time underneath that cloth it would flip, but it doesn't in the time frame I'm taking the photos. Zero to four, it's before you have words, so it's kind of like this very warm, I don't even know if the word's womb-like, but it's some kind of like very secure feeling that area. So it's, I think for me, it's between sort of bitten and up to Merricks, um, where we have family friends that we spend a lot of time up in that area. Whenever I drive through that area now, I really feel um, really comfortable and really happy and like I'm um, in somewhere that I know really well. And it's kind of nice in some ways because it's like it's that time before you really have many memories. So I don't actually have that many me memories of that time, but just the feeling around it is really quite strong. One memory I had was um, being at Hastings and being at this uh, seagrass festival. I remember like like little pinwheels or like quite um, glitzy sort of glamorous 1980s shiny ones and then like I think it might have been the first glow sticks were around so it was all pretty fun. And then I, the other thing I remember was this seagrass festival but not very strong but just being at this festival and there being like all these um, bird puppets and, and then this um, seagrass, some old sails, but they also could be bits of silk, I'm not sure, now on long bits of bamboo. It was pretty incredible to have some of these long flags of seagrass that I could um, maybe use in some works. My mother made this incredible music, which is very hard to describe in some ways, but the basic gist of it was that she looked at the environmental effects report to work out how the low tides and the low tides and the high tides would be uh, emphasized, like they would become more extreme as a result of the dredging. And she looked at those differences between what was current at the time for the tides. And somehow that created rhythm and texture. It was quite incredible music all percussion with you know bits and pieces that she might have found on the beach or big drums that you can imagine might have come in on um, container ships those kinds of things uh, yeah and so that became the the soundtrack and then I asked um, yeah Auntie Caroline if she'd be happy to repeat um, a, a really incredible creation story about Bunjil and the story goes that um, the sea levels were rising and it, all the tribal groups were out of kilter, out of harmony, they were fishing at the wrong time of year and it, things were getting a bit out of control. So the, the story goes that um, the, the people went to talk to Bunjil about what they could do um, to stop all of this um, happening and 
he basically said you need to work in harmony with each other and um, and when that started to happen that's when they introduced the sort of um, bringing together of um, all the tribal groups and um, uh, you know there was lots of feasting and intertribal sports and, and that kind of stuff. Um, Bunja went with his spear and got the sea levels to go down and I was just thinking wow this story is like how many thousands of years old and how relevant is it to now and it seemed to fit right in with this whole um, dredging thing that we were looking at. It was really timely because my grandmother passed away last year and um, we've been remembering my grandparents and their sort of conservation legacy down there, at, um, down on the peninsula, particularly around Western Port Bay. Um, and yeah, so it was a really great opportunity for me to engage with a lot of my family history. And so I think that's what I've started to do um, with this body of work is um, look at my own memories and kind of restage them a little bit and, and also just let them be of now as well. So um, I've involved the, my kids once again in, in the work, sort of helping me relive my little memories and also not just my memories but like stories that my grandmother told me. And yeah, so that's sort of seems to have been